In this video, we're going to show how to enter an AP invoice against a purchase order and a subcontract for a job. So you can use your system menu to navigate to accounts payable, your tab icons, or the Sage desktop. You should let Sage assign the serial number or the record number. The invoice number should be unique to this invoice. And the first thing we're going to show you is how to enter an AP invoice against a purchase order. So we're going to go look up a purchase order already pre-entered. And as you can see here, whatever column heading that you're clicked on, that is what is used to filter by. So that is filtering by record, and then we need to filter it by order number. So we'll click on the order column heading. So we're using purchase order 925 to generic electrical subcontract. And you can see that there's a vendor, a job, and a description. Those all came from the purchase order screen. So it's pulling in that purchase order information in the header because it already knows that information. So when you're comparing the payable invoice to the purchase order, it knows what it's doing based on the PO number. It also pulled in all these parts, all these parts. Now something to keep in mind for a purchase order, it's totally quantity based. It does not care about the price of the widget, it only cares how many you've received. So POs are quantity based, not price based. So say for instance you want to keep this purchase order open, and you only receive 300 of the deep square boxes, you could type 300 there and it would keep the purchase order open until you received an invoice for the next 200 or the last 200. The account and sub-account are defaulting from the vendor record, which just makes entering AP all that much easier. We have to finish the header information by adding the invoice date, due date, and discount date, which also default from the vendor record, but can be overwritten. Notice the invoice total, balance, net due, that's all calculated in the bottom. Make sure that that matches your AP invoice as you're entering it. If you wanted to or needed to enter use tax, you certainly could do that. So you could also attach an image of the invoice or some other uh, note that you need to keep track of by hitting the paperclip function. And now instead of the regular save, we're going to do auto cost, auto job cost, because the PO already knows the information that needs to go in the job cost table. So when we hit the auto cost, it's going to go look at the purchase order, pull in those line items with different cost codes. Make sure you're paying attention to your posting period. That's very important. And then when we recall this record and we go to the job costs and start looking at the job costs, you'll note that it summed it all up in one cost code. So it's segregated by cost code, which is the appropriate way to do it. If you had multiple cost codes, which I'll show in the subcontract AP invoice, you'll be able to see that. So all of those got lumped into this cost code 16100 because that's what was on the purchase order. Again, if those were different cost codes, then these lines would be different. So in the job cost, it knows to put those lines to the appropriate cost code and cost type. You'll note that the cost, job cost total, 5237.40 cents, matches the invoice total. So that's entering with a purchase order. Now let's enter an invoice for a subcontract. So again, your record number happens when you save a record. Invoice number should be unique. We can look up a subcontract that we already have pre-entered. So it pulls in the vendor information, job information, and description for you. It also pulls in the details in the table. So those match. And you'll notice on this subcontract, they're actually to different cost codes. So we'll see that here in a minute. But it did pull in the appropriate information just by typing in the subcontract number. It knows it has three different items for three different amounts. Also notice the retention is 10%. Sage 100 contractor does a nice job of keeping track of your retention for you. So the difference between a purchase order and a subcontract is subcontract is dollar based, not quantity based. It doesn't care about the quantity, it only cares about the dollars. 
So you have to have at least one in the quantity in order to do the math correctly. However, you know, for instance, on this one, the weekly cleanup probably hasn't happened yet. It's just the first two. So we've adjusted the price for those first two line items. And you'll notice that retention is 10%. So it took the invoice total, 6,500, subtracted 10%, and it holds that in an account for later releasing. So we're going to auto cost this again because we already have that information in the subcontract. There's a couple pieces of information that we forgot to put in, the invoice date, due date, and it's going to give us a warning about the subaccount because the sample company likes the subaccount in there. So we'll add the subaccount, auto cost, make sure you're in the right posting period, recall, and when you look at the job cost, this time there were two cost codes that we put money to. So you can see those broke out just like they are in the payable invoice. So those two line items came off the subcontract with the cost code and cost type already associated with them. Again, subcontracts are dollar amount, not quantity based.